I'm going to show you a real life case study on how I helped this player go from this to this. It's lame. And if you watch until the end, you will learn the drills, the tips, the why that will create sound fundamentals for your beginner that will put them on the right path and give them the edge over their peers. Hi, I'm former MLB player Jermaine Curtis and let's get started. So the first place I start when it comes to the swing is not the swing, it's the lower half. I call it the base. And the way I do that is by putting a one-handed bat in between the hitter while he or she is in their batting stance. This will put them in a good position, a position where their head will be in between their lower half and they will be in a strong athletic position. Their knees will be slightly bent and will be stable. Some call this the power triangle and the reason why I start with the lower half is because of the pitcher now hang with me hang with me see before going into the fundamentals you must understand what the goal of the pitcher is the goal of the pitcher is to get the hitter off balance this is the reason they throw curveballs sliders change-ups fastballs inside to speed up the hitter etc and I know you guys might be far far away from seeing these pitches but if the pitcher gets the player off balance, then the player will have trouble getting off his A swing or a good swing for that matter. And the way the pitcher gets a player off balance is by messing up their lower half, or as I like to say, their base. So since the goal of the pitcher is to get the hitter off balance, the goal of the hitter is to maintain his balance. And the hitter that can maintain their balance the best will give themselves a very good chance of being successful. This is why I start with the lower half because it's such an important part of hitting. It's actually the most important part. If that lower half is not balanced, it's going to be hard to be a consistent hitter. So that's why I start with the lower half and also why I put a one handed bat in between their legs. So the next thing I do is put a bucket in front of their front foot about six to nine inches away. The reason I do this is because when they do stride, I don't want them to be too wide. See, if you get too wide after stride, that can cause a hitter to get off balance and have a weak base. And it also goes the other way. If a player has too short of a stride, that could cause a weak base. See, I want them to be 50, 50 or 60, 40 with more weight on their backs side now let me explain let's look at the player in this case study right here this is when we first started working together notice how all his weight has shifted to his front foot this push forward with his body will make his swing even more choppier than it already is and would have caused a lot of problems later on in his career see when i was working out with barry bonds he would say to me that i should feel like i was in a phone booth and if we look at barry bonds we see that he stays in that phone booth when he swings he is staying on his backside and not drifting forward and to add to my point we see that he has 60 percent of his weight on his backside and 40 percent on the front side the reason we want to be 60 percent on our backside and 40 percent on our front side is because it allows us to be consistent with our swing this means getting on plane early with the ball and if you hit it out front you're going to hit it on the upswing and that will allow the hitter to drive the baseball to their pool side the next thing i focus on is the actual stride i prefer them to be striding straight forward or slightly open where their stride is in the middle of their back foot i would say like three to four inches or so we don't want them to step in the bucket so that's a no-go the other thing i did not recommend them to do is to dive forward a lot of young hitters dive forward and one of my students said that it's because coaches teach young players to hit to the opposite field so in efforts to make that happen young players naturally dive to get that result all I have to say is I wouldn't recommend that because it cuts off their swing and this results to hitting a lot of ground balls or weak contact and could stifle your power. And if you don't know what diving forward is, this is what it is. It's when you stride not straight forward, but slightly too much towards the plate. So check that out because it's something you don't want to be doing. You could get away with it if you're strong, but I wouldn't recommend it at any age. The next thing I want to talk about is the leg kick. I'm not a big fan of the high leg kick. Okay. Remember what I said about the base slash lower half earlier being the most important part of hitting. Well, with the high leg kick, it's hard to maintain balance. I like the mid leg kicks just enough where it's not too high and not too low so you can maintain it well. It's something I recommend because it's easy to maintain. If leg kicks aren't your thing, you can go to getting your front foot down early. That's an easy way to maintain balance. The next thing I look for is if they have a firm front side. This is important because this allows you to drive everything into the baseball and create leverage. 
coverage in the that swing. Ball, Maine Curtis just hit the second solo home. But putting the bucket six to nine inches in front of his front foot or her front foot after stride, it would help them to create a firm front side. Because what would happen is if they shift forward with their knee, their knee is gonna hit the bucket and that ain't gonna be fun. So they would learn very quickly not to shift that knee forward. The next thing I look for is how their front foot lands. I want their front foot to land at 45 degrees and not 90 degrees. Here's why. If we look at the best players in the MLB, look how their front foot lands. It lands at 45 degrees, and this is because it allows them to rotate and get extended upon contact, which allows them to drive the baseball. The next thing I look for is the back foot, and what I mean specifically is squishing the bug. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to say squishing the bug is the worst thing to do for young hitters, and I agree if you do it wrong. The way I would like for my players to do it is like what Jim Tomey says. This is something, Greg, that we talked about early. Watch yes. the back heel. Yes. Watch the back heel. He pinches the quad, the inner quads right here. He pinches this. He stays square. Watch the heel. Stays on the ground. Keep going. If we can run it, watch that back heel. That is awesome. So what why, he's not why is doing, that awesome? Because because what he's on his move to the baseball, he's not spinning off he's early. Not spinning right. He's he's coming here back heel. Boom, on contact, he's spinning. He's not spinning early. And the way I get them to do it correctly is by working on the inside pitch. For example, I put a ball on a tee, put it close to the hitter, and tell them to hit it up the middle. If they pull this pitch, then they will spin off the ball, which is not what we want. But if they hit it up the middle, they will stay inside the baseball and work inside their body. This is also how I teach how to hit the outside pitch. If the young player hits the ball up the middle correctly, this will give them the pinch on the back foot, as Jim Tomey said, and allow them to have a firm front side that would teach them not to spin off the baseball. Now that we got the lower half taken care of, let's go to the upper body. The first place I start is with the hands. A lot of young players go to the box grip which I call the death grip. It does not allow them to control the barrel properly. What I would recommend is lining the knuckles up or in between the box grip or knuckles lined up. See, when you hit with your knuckles lined up, the bat is not deep in your hands and it allows you to control the barrel. I remember Barry Bonds telling me that he wanted the bat in his hands like if he had a hammer in his hands. With the hammer, you will not hold it like a box grip, but instead hold it where it's in your fingers. This will allow the player to control the barrel, but better yet, know where the barrel is at all times and this seems to be the issue with a lot of young hitters they have no idea where the barrel is especially when they start their swing so to correct that i would recommend that you grip the bat in your fingers with your knuckles lined up or in between the box grip and knuckles lined up if you do it this way it will help them have a more consistent swing but also help them when they get jammed you don't want them to get jammed with the bat deep in your hand that will swell up your thumb and really mess up your swing i had that happen to me once and my hand looked like a car cartoon that day changed my grip forever the next thing is going into the load there are many ways to load but the two that i would recommend will help you to put you in a strong position the two options are going back and going up if you're going to go back you do not want to move your shoulders you just want your hands to go back and activate your scap i like to say to the younger players to drop the bat and sock my hand when they're about to sock my hand each player loads on their back side and activates their scap to get a very hard clean punch yeah. this is the load i like and recommend again yeah. make sure their shoulders stay in line with the pitcher yeah. and a good reference to have is the bat would be at 45 degrees and knob will be pointing to the catcher and the top of the bat will be in the middle of your head you don't want the bat to wrap around your head this will cause issues later on in your career something i had to deal with when i was younger and believe me you don't want to mess around with that another way i get them to feel this is by using the peekaboo drill as you can see, hold the bat in between the face and have their top hand go back until they feel the scap activated. This gives them the feel and puts them in that strong position that we want. The other way I would recommend that they load is to go up. You see this with a lot of hitters. Their hands go up almost to their ear. A drill I do is called the cradle drill. As you can see, I have the hitter put the bat on the ground and what they're going to do is to take it up off the ground and up towards their ear. 
what you will notice is that their entire body will be in sync. The leg kick, the stride, all of it. It's a great drill to get them connected and the drill I highly recommend. So now that we talked about that, the next thing is the actual swing. When it comes to the swing, I'm a big believer in the top hand because the top hand controls the barrel of the bat. Plus the top hand creates the path of the swing. So what I do is have them do the catch drill. So the drill I recommend to you is a drill I learned from Barry Bonds. The drill I recommend you will allow you to be more direct to the baseball, will teach you to control the strike zone, and will teach your body to stay back and let the ball come to you. The drill I recommend to you is the catch drill. This drill is by far one of my favorite drill and can be used in so many ways. So what you are going to do is drop your bat, you're going to get in your batter stance, have a partner flip you the ball, and you're going to catch it with your top hand. So if you're a right-handed hitter, you're going to catch it with your right hand. If you are a left-handed hitter, you're going to catch it with your left hand. In this video right now, I'm using a pancake glove. I usually use a left-hander's glove and put it on my right hand so I can catch it, but I left it at home so I made an adjustment. Anyways, as you can see, what you want to do is you want to get ready as if you were going to hit the ball and catch it with your top hand. The main reason I like this drill is we are going to get more into that later, but it allows you to see what the body is doing before you take a swing. So I use this drill before I started hitting in the cage and it's what I do with my students. The first thing when they get inside the cage. I also like this drill because it starts working your hand-eye coordination and it trains you to learn the strike zone, which is a very important thing. It's definitely one of my favorite drills and I did this every day in my routine. Now I do it all with my students. Now to get a little more deeper, the reason I like this drill is because you get to see what your body is doing. For example, if a player is opening up, you immediately see it and you can make adjustments without swinging the bat. Or if your head is not staying on the baseball, you'll be able to see it and you'll be able to feel it and notice it. Or if you're not getting extension through the baseball, you can make corrections and teach to get through the ball just by using this drill. I also like this drill because it teaches the strike zone. Earlier in the video, I was taking pitches that were balls. If you do this, this will allow you to learn the strike zone as a hitter, which is very, very important, especially as you move up the ladder in competition. And if you control the strike zone, you get better pitches to hit, and this will result to more success. Another reason I love this drill is because it gets your top hand to get on playing with the ball. See, the top hand controls the barrel and also creates the path of the swing. And if your top hand is going direct to the ball, or in other words, goes directly to catch the ball, you are going to hit. The last reason I love this drill is, is because if you are a player that is jumping at the baseball and not staying back, this will teach your body to let the ball come to you, which will make you more balanced and balance is one of the most important things when it comes to hitting. When a young player does this right, they would get on playing with the pitch and it, it will correct a lot of flaws in their swing. For example, they have to let the ball come to them, keep their head on the ball all the way into the glove, focus on being direct, etc. A lot of positives from this one drill that I love and recommend. And when they have the glove on their top hand and they're trying to catch the ball, it would be like a small C to get on playing with the ball. And it's something all the best hitters do. The next thing I do is top hand and bottom hand separately. I do the bottom hand first. You can start on the T as you see here and I would put it inside and I would force them to hit it up the middle or you can do it with front flips. Make sure that they are hitting the ball and extending through it. After you do a few of those, go to the top pan. I usually do the same thing by putting it on the T and having them hit it up the middle. Make sure when they hit it, that they don't turn their wrist too soon. We call that rolling over and we don't want that. Instead, when you hit it and are extending, we want that bat to fall into the wrist instead of being turned over. Another way I like to say to my hitters is give yourself a pat on the back over your front shoulder. This will give them that right swing path that keeps them inside the baseball. Now, after we do that, we go into swinging with two hands on the bat. The first thing I do is set the tee back deep on the hitter or do side toss so he can get in the slot early and he can stay back on that back side and not drift forward on his front foot. After reviewing the best hitters in the world and to ever play this game, what I noticed is that the best hitters' bats get parallel with the ground. Just look right here.
See, the catch drill and making the small C will get that bat parallel to the ground, but another way is by putting the T deep. The next thing I do is put the T out front now to work on extension through the baseball. So the deep T helped them to be short and stay back, and now the T out front is helping them to get extension. We wanna be short to it and long through it. So the drill I would recommend is the two T drill. I really like working on the T deep and then the two T out front. This will help to extend that swing plane so even if they're a tad bit off with their timing, they can still hit a line drive somewhere. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you have to watch this video right here, which talks about the five biggest mistakes that 93% of youth baseball players make. It's a must watch and it's something that if you're doing, it's definitely hindering your performance and keeping you behind the pack. So go ahead, click that video right now and I'll see you in the next video.